Welcome to this M1 video on force diagrams. Now, this is the start of a series of videos that is going to introduce you to force diagrams and basically Newton's first law of motion, his second law of motion and his third law of motion. But in today's videos, we're just going to start off with the, the very basics. Now, when you're given a problem to solve, you often, there's quite a lot in that problem, you often have to draw a force diagram to be able to visualize everything that's happening. And an example of a force diagram would be something like this, where this first line is, you know, a horizontal plane it could be a, a rough horizontal plane it might be a smooth horizontal plane and then on that you'll have some item which we often draw as a box or a circle if we're talking about a particle and then there's a series of forces that gener gen generally act upon that box so you know this could be you know a truck anything like that so the force acting down is usually the weight. So it'll be its mg, it's mass times gravity. Okay, which we find finds the value of weight. So mg there. Uh, the opposing force to that is called the normal reaction, which we call not n. We call that r for the normal reaction. And then there might be generally other forces. So, you know, some sort of pulling force or might be a pushing force. And then if this is a rough horizontal plane, we usually have a, a force in the opposite direction, which I usually draw along the line of the, the plane to show that that's where it's acting. And that might be F for friction, say. Okay, and when these forces are balanced, so you know if R and W will be equal to each other, otherwise, for example, if R was greater than W, this would fly up in the air. So the normal reaction is always equal to the weight. You know, if you push down on a table, the table is effectively pushing back up at you. Okay, equaling that force. So it stays balanced. Now, similarly with like F and P, if these two are equal, this will either remain at rest or if it's moving, it will continue moving at a constant velocity. If P is greater than F, so greater than the friction, then this object will start accelerating. But to be able to describe what's happening on a diagram is going to become very important. And they won't just be, you know, horizontal diagrams. There'll be ones that are sloping as well. You know, something like this where we have a theta there and we have the object on the slope. Now these things, you know, the weight acts straight down whereas the normal reaction is always at 90 degrees. Okay, force pulling up the slope maybe. And then, you know, friction. If the object's moving up the slope, then friction would move down the slope this way. However, if the object is moving down the slope even with that force up the slope the friction would actually act up the slope and if it's in equilibrium then that friction could effectively either be acting up the slope or down the slope okay depending on the question but the diagram like your diagram is going to help you be able to find the equations you need to find to be able to solve uh, the problem that you're dealing with okay so now we're just going to talk about Newton's first law of motion 
okay and that is just states that an object will stay at rest and that an object will move with a constant velocity and continue to move with a constant velocity unless an unbalanced force acts upon it okay so all the ones that we're going to initially start looking at are going to have balanced forces okay they're either going to be at rest or at a constant velocity now when well actually we won't just look at those we will look at a few others so we we do have a way of resolving forces so if i resolve a force that means if i've got a force like this so this is like a particle and i've got two forces acting upon it say 20 newtons left and say 30 newtons right okay now if i want to talk about the resultant force the resultant force is going to be well this object's going to move to the right isn't it and the resultant force is going to be 10 newtons because 30 take away 10 gives me a 30 sorry take away 20 gives me 10 left over okay so this is called a resultant resultant force and that is another thing that we are going to be looking at very briefly so there's not much to this video just a little look at force diagrams so let's jump into the first example and here we have it so the diagram shows forces act on a particle draw a force diagram to represent the resultant force so force diagram to represent the resultant force now the forces left and right 30 and 30 there they're going to cancel each other out meaning this object is not going to move left or right and then up and down so 40 take away 15 is going to leave me 25 so this is going to have a resultant force of 25 newtons downwards now describe the motion of the particle the particle is accelerating downward okay it's not moving with a constant velocity because there's a force acting upon it so that force is constantly speeding it up for it to go at a constant velocity it needs to be balanced okay okay second example the diagram shows a particle acted on by several forces given that the particle is at rest find the value of p and q so if this particle is at rest it means that the forces are balanced so the force to the left and the force to the right are equal so I can start off with 2p equals 50. Well, therefore, p equals 25 newtons. So we found p straight away. And then looking vertically, we've got 3p plus 15 equals 6q plus 2 lots of p minus 10 okay now i found out what p is already so that's 25 so 3 times 25 plus 15 equals 6q plus 225 minus 10 so i've got 75 plus 15 is 90 equals 6q plus 25 take away 10 is 15 times by 2 is 30 so 6q 
equals 60, Q equals 10 newtons. And that is as simple as that. Okay, nothing too challenging about this. These type of questions just initially. Uh, I do promise they will get a little bit harder. But for now, we're just going to start off nice and easy. So just a reminder, if you're yet to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button now. If you find the video useful, hit that like. And don't forget, if you're willing and able to help me out, hit that join button. Otherwise, let's look at some questions. So I've got three questions for you today. Nice, straightforward. Pause the video now. And now that hopefully you've had a go at the questions, let's look at the answers. Okay, both of these particles are stationary, so the forces are balanced. So for part A, that means that 60 newtons equals 2p. So p equals 30 newtons. And for part B, that means 50 minus p is equal to 3p. So 50 equals 4p, p equals 12.5 newtons. Nice, straightforward, really simple maths. Okay, this particle is moving with a constant velocity, which means that the forces are balanced. So horizontally, that is 3p minus q equals 34. Can't do anything with that just yet. Look vertically and we get 2p plus q equals 56. So I've got two equations and two unknowns. I can solve them simultaneously. Uh, looking at these two, one negative q, one positive q. So if I add them, they will cancel. So 3p plus 2p is 5p. The q's will cancel. And then 56 plus 34 is 90. 90 divided by 5 is 18. So 18 newtons for p. And then from equation 2 we'll do. 2p plus q equals 56. So that is 18 times 2. So 36 plus q equals 56. So q is equal to 20 newtons. And there we've solved this problem. Nice, straightforward, just a simultaneous equations question, but nice and easy nonetheless. And then final question, a truck moving along a horizontal road. So we've got a truck moving along a horizontal road. So we're just the truck at as a kind of square rectangle. It provides a forward thrust of 12,000 newtons and a constant resistance so if we're, we're moving in this direction, then the resistance acts in the opposite direction, and that's 2,400 newtons. Calculate the resulting force acting on the truck. So it's just simply 12,000 minus 2,400. And that's going to give me 9,600 newtons in the forward direction. So just using the words in the question. And it's that simple. Okay. And that is all there is to this video. 
so stick around for the next video um, next we'll be looking at forces as vectors and then we'll start to move on to forces and acceleration um, motion in two directions connected particles and so on okay so there's quite a lot in this little series of videos they're the dynamics of particles moving in a straight line so it does get a little bit more interesting so you know if unless you're watching this on the first day it releases there should be a video coming up now that you can click on to